Hello, welcome to How to Play Duchess for One Player. Please like and subscribe to be updated as soon as we come out with new videos. If you go down into the description and click the show more, you're going to see links to other YouTube channels that I enjoy, the music for this channel, and a link to a nice Discord. Also a link to card game meetups on Reddit. Go there. And the music today is provided by these two artists. Thank you guys so much for providing music today. Please visit their channel. You'll see the link in the description. This solitaire comes from the book Solitaire by David Parlay. So what we're going to do is take a single deck and we're going to deal out 12 cards in th um, of three um, overlapping, excuse me, four overlapping uh, fans of three cards each. Now, you'll have a draw, car draw pile, a discard pile, and what you're going to be doing is taking any of the cards of the fan, uh, of the last card of the fan, those are playable, and you're going to decide which card you want to set as a foundation. So now, the other foundations, the Nine of Hearts, the Nine of Clubs, and the Nine of Diamonds, will need to be played. These foundations will build up to the Eight of Spades, will be the last card. And uh, on the tableau, you of course will build down off color, and you can move entire foundations onto other foundations if they fit, not necessarily just one card at a time. This is an odds against game, meaning it is possible to lose, and more often than not you probably will lose, but once you've uh, won this game once, you'll understand the simple strategy and you'll win very much often if you follow it each time. Uh, on the tableau foundations, ace does wrap around the king. So that ace, so we could play a king on top of it. Uh, why we didn't play that king of hearts on it, I do not know. I guess I wasn't really paying attention. This is probably the second attempt I had at this game, so I'm learning just as much as you are uh, when I do these videos sometimes, um, especially with solitaires. They're more or less processes than they are games. So now we unlock two different nines. We were able to play them. Uh, once we have a nine of diamonds, we have that ten of diamonds there to play. And now we have the Jack of Spades, and now we've played that Ten of Diamonds. So, yeah, they're more or less processes than they are actual games. It's more of a way of passing time than an actual challenge. Now, sometimes uh, there is a challenge in a game, but usually those solitaires require more than one deck of cards. And it's really an odds thing. Sometimes the deck is dealt or shuffled in such a way that there's no possible way you can win. Now, in this game, when the draw deck does rundown you are allowed one and only one uh, redeal which is what happened in this game we ended up using the redeal and we're going to go through our cards and see what we played and why we didn't play that six I am not sure passed up twice there probably wasn't paying attention because I could have had that six five uh, and four but instead I play a different six But yeah, solitaires are pretty much process games. Now, why I haven't played that two of clubs on top of that ace yet, that's also a mystery. Now we finally played it. But more or less, solitaires are processes more than anything else. Okay, now we're getting some luck on our side. And so you're not necessarily playing a game as much as you are going through the process, going through the rules of the game itself. And um, the best example I give, Osmosis is a solitaire that it's all in the shuffle of the cards. There's not really much you can do to affect the order of the cards. You can skip legal plays. I'm not 100% sure if it affects anything in Osmosis. But for most solitaires, it's a process. And which is why they were originally called Patience Games. Alright, so now I managed to lock up the cards I lost, and let's see if I can win it again if I try better this time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the domino shuffle and just they throw every card down on the table and uh, throw it around, do a couple of riffle shuffles and a couple of uh, hand shuffles and another couple of riffle shuffles again, and then we're going to set up again. Four fans of three cards overlapping, and then the draw deck down, and then we're going to say, this time we're going to play kings, make it a little bit easier on myself. So, all kings, and also did that because I saw two kings in the fan, and therefore I could build up to getting those other kings. So, in this case now, queens will be the last card played. So, if we do see a queen, it's probably good to play it on the tableau. 
and we could build on top of that king. We could have put the either red jack down. Uh, we did it, and I'm not sure why at this point. But then again, let's see if I actually uh, overcome this uh, challenge this time, as opposed to last time where I did not overcome the challenge. That changed my mind there. That ace was more valuable to me. Some doubts on whether I should play that five. So we'll just skip it for now. So you see, I, this game I played uh, the foundations on top of uh, other foundations. It's probably one of the mistakes I made the first game. Now there was a mis well, that's not a mistake because uh, queens are the uh, last card. So we're getting there. We're getting to something good. I'm just waiting for that ace of hearts to show up. Or excuse me, the king of clubs. Also waiting for the ace of hearts. Because that, yep, there we go. That opens up a lot of possibilities for us. Now a redeal. This is where magic will happen. At this point now we've redealed, we redealt, uh, things are going to happen, the process is going to move along. Once you've gotten all the foundations, uh, most of these games, they, similar processes, uh, just depends on the rules. This is similar to a couple of the other solitaires I've done, and um, there's a technical term in David Parlay's book, but honestly I did not really read into the glossary that much. I try to figure these games out. Sometimes I have to circle back to it, cross-reference it, and uh, get the rules down. Uh, but this game in particular is a series of games. He has a technical term. Um, this one, of course, is known as a packer where you're packing cards in. Um, but he classifies them in this book in several ways. The book's language itself is not great as far as user-friendliness. Uh, it does take some time to really comprehend what he's saying and how to do it. So it's not one of those books you can pick up and uh, instantly get the feeling that you are conquering the game uh, and understanding it and comprehending it. So there we go. So like always, uh, come to Reddit. And this is what the Card Game Meetups page will look like. And these are the musicians. Please visit them. Um, they need more views. They have some good music. We need to encourage some good creativity. And also, uh, you know, if you don't have any friends that you play cards with or the friends you have, they only know a few games they're not willing to learn new ones, and you just want to meet some new ones and play some actual card games, come to our card game meetups. Also consider looking at that Discord link. Um, That's a Discord for people who play card games, know card games. And uh, chances are maybe one of them's in your town. Um... It's a great place to speak about card games, talk about card games, and just explore possibilities here of card games you've never 